So read with me, you all. I'm not going to be before you long. You all, I'm, I'm going to tell you how busy the devil is. Um, there's a popular um, television show that come on tonight. <laughs> y'all, y'all, the devil just had me antsy. Oh, I couldn't sleep. I'm trying to get the word together. I'm thinking about power, y'all. This show. <laughs> By show of hands, how many of y'all watch Power? Okay, it's just a few. Thank God, thank y'all, because it, it's that addictive. Y'all listen, it is that addictive. I said, Father God, after, after this series is done with, I'm just going to give up TV, but I got to wait till this is over. So anyway, but y'all, I was up, I was up, and I said, Father God, give me something good for your people. So the word, so God brought me in 2 Kings, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven, by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha to Gilgal. Y'all, that's two different people. We got Elijah, and we got who? We got Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 3. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take your master from you today? And he said what? Yes, I know. Shh, keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Verse 5. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take your master from you today? So he answered and said what? Yes, I know. Shh. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to where? To Jordan. But he said again, what did he say, y'all? As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah, y'all follow me. Elijah took his mantle. Y'all yeah, y'all know what a mantle is? A mantle is a form like a cape. He took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Now, a lot of y'all thought that the only time the water was parted was with, was, was with the Red Sea, y'all. But then the water got parted a few times in the Bible, amen? So this man literally took off his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, bop, opened up, and the water opened up, and they crossed over on dry land. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, pay attention, ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elijah, I'm sorry, Elisha said, please, let a what? Double portion. <laughs> please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, watch this, you have asked an easy thing. No, no? Okay, so y'all in the word. So he said, you have asked the what? Hard thing. But nevertheless, let me see, Is nevertheless. Okay, nevertheless is slanted in my mind. Nevertheless, y'all, that means his emphasis on it. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be for you. For if not, it shall be not so. Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them, and Elijah went by a whirlwind into heaven. Hmm. Y'all, I want to talk to you from the subject today of the double portion. Come on. Y'all, how, how many of y'all ever familiar with the phrase, the double portion? Oh, yeah. I need me a double. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the phrase, the double portion, you ever had a slice of cake? A slice of cake that was so good that you went back for the second piece. <laughs> Y'all know what that second piece is? The double portion. Y'all, I, I, I remember a time a while back somebody had made cakes for the men. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Somebody say amen for those amen. cakes. Y'all, and, 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 and as I sliced the cake, 
the 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 frosting and the and the can, can I can I preach it today? The, Please, all that stuff was just all up in the cake. Yes, Lord. Yes. And y'all, I bit the cake, y'all. The cake was so moist. Mm -hmm. The cake, my God, this cake was so fresh that I had to come back for what a double portion. Y'all, the cake <laughs> was that good, y'all. So we gonna talk today about the double portion. Now watch this. Now I said the double portion is fine. But now don't you be going back for no triple and no four portions. So I had, I had to take that cake to my shop. And I promise you all, I'm not lying, I'm not exaggerating. Everyone that sliced that cake said, what store did you get this cake from? Jesus. I said, my auntie made it. Oh, Auntie Tina, I said, uh, <laughs> I, I, I have an auntie who you know not of. See, 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 see they used to Auntie Tina coming with the wraps and the tuna and, and all that's good. But I said, but I got an auntie who you know not of. I said, this is Auntie Tanya. And y'all, they went back and guess what? Every single person, they went back for that double portion. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How many of you all have ever asked for or have prayed for increase in your life? Just by a show of hands. You've ever asked for or you've prayed for increase in your life? Yeah. Let me tell you this. A double portion of anything is a measure of increase. And when you ask God for anything, there are things that you must do as the petitioner in order to receive them. I'm going to say that again. If you ask God for anything, because a double portion is nothing but an increase. It's more. There are things you must do as the petitioner, yes. as the person who asks in order for you to receive them. Father God, bless our marriage. Yes, God. Okay, now some stuff you got to do hmm. if you want me to bless it, right? right? Father God, bless my home. Bless my finances. You've asked. Now there's things you have to do as the petitioner in order for you to receive them. So here in the story, we have Elijah about to be taken into heaven by a whirlwind. And Elisha, his servant, is with him, right? Elijah says to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. We're in verse 1. Now, Bethel, you all, means a holy place. Now, watch this. So Elijah tells his servant Elisha to stay here, for God has sent me to a what? A holy place. Now, watch this. What does Elisha say? Look at Okay, look at verse 2. What did Elisha say? He says, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he went with him down to Bethel, which is what? The holy place. Now, y'all, this is why the spirit of discernment is so key, you all. Mm -hmm. Discernment is nothing but, you know, that unction, that elevated feeling of intuition, but on a spiritual level. You, you, ever, been, you ever been getting out your car? Mm -hmm. Late? And walking, you're like, hold on. And you know, you just do your little, you know, your head on that swivel. Y'all, I've pulled up. No, I'm going to go back around the block. Y'all, yeah. listen, I watch cars. I got off at, a, I got off at Obama. Buddy hit every jam I hit. He hit every corner and turn I hit. And when I came down my block, he came down with me, and I passed on up to my block. Kept on going. You know, I ain't going to pull in the driveway so you can pull behind me. Now I can't get out. I ain't going to, uh, took Buddy right back on the Maxim police, and Buddy kept on going. Mm. I passed my block on up, came back out of my thing. Wife, somebody followed. I yeah, think, babe, you thing. tripping. Well, he finna go to the police station, because that's where I'm going. <laughs> Y'all, that's intuition, right? Yeah. Discernment is heightened, but on a spiritual level. Now, watch this. This is why the spirit of discernment is so key. Mm. Elisha is talking as if he knows that Elijah was about to be taken away. Why is he saying, every time he said, I'm finna go to Bethel, why is he saying, as your soul lives, I will not leave you? Why didn't he just say, I won't leave you, or I want to go with you? Why is he making the declaration, as your soul lives? Look at the beginning of verse 1. It says, and it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. God was about to take his leader up. God was about to take his master up. He did not know what God's plan was, but he had the spirit of discernment. This is why he said, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Nowhere in the first verse did it say that the Lord spoke to Elisha, I'm sorry, Elisha, and told him that Elijah was about to be taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. Wow. Nowhere in that. 
The reason he's saying as your soul lives is because he is discerning something that pertains to his lead. Y'all, the reason he's so adamant and they got exclamation points, he's discerning something about his leader. Now, his leader like, hey, buddy, I'm getting ready to go here. I'll be back. He's so close to this man, he said, as your soul lives, I'm going with you. I know Elijah was probably like, all right, come on in. All right, hey, now you came with me over here, right? Okay, you, that's cool. Hey, but I'm about to go down on Halstead. I'll be back. As your soul lives, I'm going with you. Yeah, after, after two, as your soul lives, I'm like, what's going on, brother? <laughs> you, you know something I don't know? Right. I ain't going to, I mean, can you imagine somebody sticking with you like that? The, the scripture didn't hint that Elijah knew what was about to happen, hmm. right? The scripture just said that when the Lord was about to take Elijah up, but Elisha had the spirit of discernment. To what level is your spirit of discernment towards leadership in ministry? What level is your discernment towards the people with whom you labor together with in ministry? I firmly believe that people get tricked and duped in the church because they ignore the spirit of discernment when it comes to people. Y'all listen, there people come to church, their heart is pure, but you can discern some things about uh, the way this person is praying. You can discern some things about the way this person is worshiping. You can just discern some things, y'all. Heighten your spirit of discernment. Elisha had a heightened spirit of discernment about his leader. He knew something was going down. So I need to connect myself with the man of God. Jesus. I need to be right where the man of God is going. Now follow me. Now watch this. People get tricked and duped when they ignore the spirit of discernment. Y'all, I was working in jewels and I was, you know, I was one of the fastest cashiers around. I was going, doo, 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 doo. I knew my codes, I knew what avocado was, I knew what, you know, you had to put some codes in. I knew everything. People love my line. Like, he be really moving. Now y'all know what I mean. All right. <laughs> now, now, man come in my line. Y'all listen, first of all, he, he didn't have the right look. Huh. You know how that look is off? You like, now, I ain't super sad. I'm 17. I'm like, oh, man, what are you off? <laughs> you know, he got the, he got that. He, man. <laughs> <laughs> he got one item on the belt, uh. and he got a $100 bill. Uh. He come up like, yeah, that's all. I'm like, all right. 99 cents. Okay, yeah. And he hit me with it. All right, you know what? Just give me um, just give me four yeah. four twenty. Yeah. Hit me with yeah. the whole money gang. I don't know how I went. Hit me with the whole money gang. Give me four twenties back. Give two two. I probably get a man six hundred dollars when it was over. But y'all, I knew something was off when he walked out. I called my manager. I said, somebody ran the money game off you. She said, for real? I said, I, I said. She said, close your drawer down right now. Take whoever's in your line. Close your drawer down right now. Boom. I closed my drawer down. I went in there. Buddy got me for fifty dollars. I don't know how he did it. He came in with a hundred. He left out with a hundred and fifty, minus the Snickers he bought, because he did buy the Snickers. But y'all, listen, <laughs> something, something about his whole whatever was ringing like, pay, you know, pay attention. Have you ever had those moments when it's like, pay attention? Yeah. Something ain't right. Listen, that's on the negative. But what about in the positive? Have you ever had those men? Something is something is going down spiritually. Something good is happening, y'all. I'm telling you to pay attention and elevate your spirit of discernment. Now watch this. I got duped and I got tricked because I ignored it. When Jim Jones, not the rapper Jim Jones, <laughs> not Dipset Jim Jones, not, <laughs> not, not him, not him. <laughs> the, the Caucasian Jim Jones led 918 people to their death in Jonestown, Guyana, it was because people lack discernment about their leader. Uh -huh. Y'all, he's their leader. First of all, he got us all in the jungle. That's, that's red flag. <laughs> Somebody to be talking. What we all doing out here in the, in the jungle? Right. Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> now you said we was going to, now you said, oh my. <laughs> now, now you said we was going to minister, we was going to witness and all right, that. Right. Now we done that. That was from three to five. Now why, now why do we have to spend the night, Pastor? I mean, is somebody going, Pastor, why we got to spend the night out here, Pastor? Pastor, why is four days, Pastor? 
Pastor, why we been out here a month? Pastor, why ain't nobody got no clothes on, 